In Slaughterhouse 5, Billy Pilgrim went to New York City to get on a television program. This happened right after his plane crash and the death of Valencia, his wife. He wanted to tell the world about the Troll Family Dormants. Instead, he got into a literature radio program that was spending the evening talking about Uncle Tom's Cabin. The program, which I called Glamps at Night, was examining the importance of Uncle Tom's Cabin in modern life. Billy stepped into their studios and pretended to be a journalist from the Union Gazette. When they led him in to talk, he started speaking about the Troll Family Dormants. This is where the idea of my project came into existence. In the book, the host that interviews Billy calls for a commercial break moments after Billy starts to speak. During the break, the people at the studio tell him to leave. I was interested in knowing what Billy said during a short time, and what he could have said if he had been allowed to stay. Obviously, I could never know, so I decided that I would make it up myself. I took the short interview that Billy had and turned it into a full-fledged interview. My rendition has the host cutting to a break just as is in the book, but comes back and has Billy to stay. The host says that people called in to ask to hear Billy's story. At the same time, a psychologist who works down the street calls in as well and asks to come into the studio and study Billy and his responses. The psychologist thinks that Billy has a mental disorder that was recently discovered by the EMA. The studio agrees to have him. And now, my presentation. Welcome back to your favorite late night literature radio program, Glamis at Night. Today, we are talking about Uncle Tom's Cabin, and we're seeing what the critics nowadays have to say about it. Now, we have another critic, this one from the Ilium Gazette. Billy Pilgrim. How goes it, Mr. Pilgrim? Not so great, Mr. Smith. Understandably, sir. We just had another critic talk about blowjobs. What do you think about Uncle Tom's Cabin? It's an alright book. Have you read the works of Kilgore Trout? Who? He's an excellent author. Really makes one think. Never mind that. Talk about what you're here for, Mr. Pilgrim. Absolutely, sir. On the eve of my daughter's marriage in 1967, I was kidnapped. Not by people, but by these strange beings called Tralfemidorians. What in God's name are you rambling about, Mr. Pilgrim? They come from this planet called Tralfemidor. They took me there and explained to me how wrong we all are. About Uncle Tom's cabin? No, of course not. Wrong about time. You see, these Tralfemidorians can see in four dimensions rather than three. They can look anywhere in time. They know how the universe starts and ends, and it's their fault that it does. E ends, that is. They aren't the reason why it starts. The Tralfemidorians showed me all of this. They know more than we ever could. Mr. Pilgrim, Billy, what are you talking about? They put me in a zoo to show other Tralfemidorians what humans look like. Um, we'll be right back after these messages. You do everything in your car, from talking to friends, to watching a movie, to turning tricks with a co-worker. So why should you get out of your car to eat? At Up and Adam, we're from a time when America didn't worry about global warming, cholesterol, or who could vote. Drive into Up and Adam today. Up and Adam, food from when we were morally superior. Hi, I'm Sue Murray, and I want to be your next governor. I know how to lead from the front. I used to be a school teacher. I know what's best for San Andreas. Many of our leaders aren't doing their homework or studying like they should. You're not living up to your full potential. I know how to use third grade academic terms and talk down to a room of hyperactive, immature morons to get what I want. I can get things done. I'll make sure the 1% looks after the rest of us like they should. That you get what you deserve from people that work hard. Vote for me for governor. And we're back. Billy Pilgrim was about to be kicked out of our studios when we heard your call. You wanted them all to stay, so here he is. We've allotted him ten more minutes of airtime to tell us about his story. Now, Billy, you were talking about going to a zoo? No, I was in the zoo. The Tralfamadorians took me there to show other Tralfamadorians what humans were like. They put me in a geodesic habitat of sorts to display me. So they took you prisoner then? In a way, I suppose. It felt more like being constrained guest. They gave me food, shelter, and a novel to read, Valley of the Dolls. Then they gave me one of their own novels to read. It was strange, the novel, I mean. Their books are just clumps of symbols separated by stars. They read it all at once. They told me there's no beginning, middle, or end, nor are there causes or effects, which is a metaphor for how they perceive time, I guess. Now that's a lot of t to take in. Let's uh, break this down and start from the beginning. Where are you from? Why does that matter? I'm telling you what happened to me. All you can care about is where I come from? It's obviously Ilium. I come from Tralfamador, I come from Ilium, I come from Dresden, I come from 10 years ago, I come from 10 years from now. It was a simple question, Billy. Are you sure you are alright? Were you the only one there, on the other planet? I... I am. Please continue. No, shortly after I arrived, a woman had joined me in captivity. Her name was Montana Wildhack, and I'm sure you would know her. 
Here on Earth, she's dead. But that's only because you don't know where she went. She was picked up by the Trough Amadorians and placed in the same habitat as me. She and I have a child, born with Trough Amador. What? Billy, Montana Wildhack is dead. She used to be one of those dirty actresses, but they found her body at the bottom of a bay. In fact, that story just came out a couple of days ago. And you say that she was with you? They found a body, Mr. Pilgrim. How is it possible that you were with her and even had a child with her? Yeah, obviously, the Trough Amadorians might have replaced her body with someone that was very similar. She's on Trough Amador. She has my child. How can she do that if she's dead? That's what I'm asking, Billy. What is the name of your child? It's... The, the child's name is... The child is six months old. Hit her... <laughs> That's okay. Sometimes we forget the name of our children. Our researchers have some information coming in on you, so we'll take a short break before asking some questions. Do you wish to continue, Mr. Pilgrim? I'm giving you the option to back out now. People need to know where the Trough Amadorians are and what they have to teach. Welcome back to Glamis at Night. We're talking to Billy Pilgrim, father of an extraterrestrial. Let's start with this line of questioning. What made you want to come on air and tell us about the Tramp... Chalmaford... Chalfamadorians? Recently, I was in an aircraft crash on my way to an optometrist convention. Being that close to death made me realize I need to spread the word about the Trough Amadorians. That made me the man I am today. That, and it was meant to be. Meant to happen? What do you mean? Well, the Trough Amadorians have an important lesson to teach. They say we're the only building beings in the universe that have this absurd notion of free will. Everything that happens to us happens for a reason. There is no free will. The entire fate of the universe has already been decided. No free will? Didn't you decide to come here? On the contrary, it could have been fate that I would have ended up here. Well, we can't de debate that all day. This isn't high school English class. According to our quick search on you, it's been a colorful life, hasn't it, Billy? With the war, being a prisoner, going to the mental hospital, but ending up quite successful. My question is this. You've been through a lot. Do you really think it was all fated to be? The Trough Amadorians are right. It was all fated. There was nothing I could have done to change any of it. It was all going to happen no matter what I did to change it. I know how I die. I know how the rest of my life goes. Interesting choice of words. Nothing you could have done. Do you regret things, Billy Pilgrim? Perhaps things that could have happened in your life. Is that why you've convinced yourself that these things happened or on their own and that it was going to happen no matter what? Things have happened. That doesn't mean it wasn't designed to happen. The Trough Amadorians know how the universe ends. And how does it end, Billy? While trying to test out spaceship fuel, a pilot pushes a button that combusts the fuel in such a way that implodes the universe. You must have a way to stop him. Did you tell them to stop him? I tried. They told me that it would happen no matter what. They would just try to focus on something happier than that time. The same happens when someone dies. They just look at that person and say they're in a bad time right now, and that person is fine in another part of the timeline. They don't mourn. They sound very detached. Very similar to how you feel about the traumatic events in your life. Okay, Billy, next line of questions. Are you married? I was. My wife Valencia was just killed in a car accident. So it goes. So sorry to hear that. Pardon my bluntness, but how does this play into the whole Montana wild hack and your child with her situation? Well, Montana's on Trough Amador, as I said. There's no way for me to get to her. I don't have a spaceship. Our child will probably never see Earth. It's not a problem. Again, you had this illegitimate child, whose name you don't know without being forced. How did your wife feel about this? I never told her. She never knew any about anything about this Trough Amadorian business. Smart man. My question is this. Why did the Trough Amadorians take Montana Wild Hack from Earth? I don't know. Maybe it's because they needed someone I could have a child with. So their end game was to have a human child then? Possibly. Why take you? What was so special about you that the Trough Amadorians needed? There are plenty of people who have had similar life experiences to yours. You weren't the only prisoner of war to be seeing the bombing of Dresden. What makes you so special, Billy? I ask myself that all the time. I think it was totally random. So your selection was random, but that of Mrs. Montana was not? Doesn't that seem strange to you? I don't know. Why wouldn't they take your wife? Someone you would be comfortable with? I don't know. It's almost like you wouldn't want your wife to be there. It's strange how the mind works, right, Billy? Let me ask you this. Were you happy with your wife? Yes, we were happy together, I think. So why would you make up a scenario in which you weren't with your wife? Nothing about this is made up. They brought Montana and I to Trough Amador. The Trough Amadorians put us together, so I had no choice in having a child with her. So why didn't you tell your wife about this, then? There was no reason for her to know. She died without knowing you cheated on her. Or she died without knowing you had a severe mental condition that made you think you cheated on her. We'll be right back. Your boss is a thief, a bully, and a crook. He expects you to work. That's like slavery. And thanks to popular plebiscite, it's now entirely illegal in our state. 
Hammerstein and Faust Employment and Law. We are specialists in San Andreas employment litigation. With our help, you'll never need to work again. With a well-managed lawsuit, your economic miracle can go on forever. Call us today. Live on the beach tomorrow. Remember, accidents do happen. Why not slip and fall into the good life? This is the real American dream. Pull yourself up by your bootstraps after faking a fall at work and suing everybody into poverty. We'll show you the alternatives when it comes to getting what you deserve from your work environment. Call today or visit our website, hammersteinfaust.com. Fly US. We founded this airline 30 years ago, and those are the same planes flying today. With a team of flight attendants that are old, resentful bags or angry middle aged men who failed in life. Fly US. Sit back, relax, and shut up. And we're back. For those of you just joining us, we have a man who claims to have been abducted by aliens. He also claims those aliens abducted a porn star just for him. Billy, are you quite all right? Are you mocking me? These things I'm talking about happen. Just like Vietnam happened. Just like Dresden happened. Just like all of war has ever happened. It happened. Speaking of Dresden, you witnessed the Allied bombing of Dresden as a prisoner of war, correct? Yes, when the Germans took me captive. I remember it like it was half an hour ago. Oddly specific, but sure. Was that traumatic? Well, I knew there was no other way that could have happened. It's probably the worst thing I've ever seen. Witnessing it repeatedly only makes it worse. What do you mean when you say witnessing it repeatedly? When the Tralfamadorians took me through their time warp, only one millisecond passed on Earth, but a couple of years passed while Tralfamador. This allowed them to keep me for a while, but only take me away from Earth for a microsecond. They didn't even know about the side effects, though, or they didn't care. I've become unstuck in time. At any moment, I could travel to the war, I could travel to the future, or I could travel that millisecond I was gone for. It's totally random. You can time travel? Essentially, yes. And sometimes you travel to the war? Yes, a lot of the times. Billy, do you know a lot about any illnesses of the mind? I know some. I was in a mental hospital after the war. There's been a lot of research recently in what, in what psychoanalysts are calling post-traumatic stress disorder. Do you know what that is? Not really. Some illness of the mind, for sure. I'll explain it. When someone has seen or been a part of an extremely traumatic event, psychoanalysts have found that some people who experience these kinds of events may have vivid flashbacks or terrifying dreams about them. Interesting, but what does this have to do with me? Well, you claim to have been right there when Dresden was bombed, and thousands of people were killed, correct? Would you qualify that as a traumatic event? Yes, I would. And you claim to be able to travel back in time, but only randomly? Yes. And the icing on the cake is that you were in a mental hospital right after the war. Billy, is it possible that you have PTSD? What? No, of course not. I got better in the hospital. Then I lived a normal life until the Tralfamadorians. I can't be affected by something that happened so long ago. Billy... PTSD can happen at any time after a traumatic event. You show all the symptoms for it, and the mental hospital you went to after the war didn't have the same understanding of the mind like- That's not possible. It's not possible. It's common to have fantasies such as the one you've made up to help deal with the emotional stress. But it's not possible. I was on trial Famidor. They told me there were seven genders necessary for reproduction. That we only know about two. They see into four dimensions. They're real. They know everything. Billy, all of this is a made-up fantasy. You created this world and its inhabitants to handle all of the trauma that exists in your life. You made them up as an excuse for the lack of control in your life. Billy, we had a psychologist come in at the beginning of your interview. He came up with these questions. He's telling us there is seriously something wrong with you. It's not possible. I can prove that the Tralfamadorians exist. I've lived through my death. I die after giving a speech at a convention in Chicago. Tralfamadorians know it all, and it's unfortunate that you can't see the truth. Billy, we're sure that you have PTSD. There is no way of saying it easily. The events that unfolded at Dresden were unfortunate, but what's even more unfortunate is the effect that it had on you. I'm sorry, Billy, but that's all the time we have. Please see a therapist. It will help you and your family. Your daughter and son need their father, Billy. Thanks for being on, it, on the show. Any last comments? If you're ever in Cody, Wyoming, just ask for Wild Bob. <laughs> 